picking up where we left off with essentially KC, KP, all that fun stuff. And we have a question on 17.35. It says, the following molecular scene depicts the aqueous reactions of D2 to E, with D being the red and E being the blue. Okay. Each sphere represents 0.1 moles, but the volume is one liter in scene A, whereas scene B and C, 0.5, okay? If the reaction in scene A is at equilibrium, calculate KC. All right, so A is at equilibrium. They want us to calculate KC. All right, so they give us the equation. <coughs> uh, 2D yields E. Okay, D is red and E is blue. Okay, so let's do it that way. 2D is at equilibrium with E. And E is blue. Okay. All right. So first thing, before I even take into account any of the data or um, that they're giving us volumes and concentrations and all that fun stuff. All right, let's just write what our KC would look like. Our KC would be products over reactants. So it'd be a concentration of E over the concentration of uh, D squared. The thing is, they don't give us the concentration. What they give us is a picture that has three, well, if you don't have your book, I'll do my best here. They tell us that this is one liter, okay, uh, in scene A, and there's three red circles, and there's three B circles, and they say each circle is what, 0 0.01 moles? And they say each one of these is 0 0.01 moles. Okay, for the respective uh, element or whatever it is. Okay, so what we need to do is figure out the concentration. All right, and then just plug it in here for A. So for red, for D's, the concentration is 0 0.03 moles. Since I have, and here we go with my bad threes again, 0 0.03 moles because I have three red, and that's over a liter. So they make the math easy, at least for us. And for E, it's the same thing. There's three, okay, and I'm over a liter. Which means that my concentration is 0 0.03 and 0 0.03 since I'm dividing by a liter. Molarity is moles per liter. I have that many moles and I have the liter, so we have 0 0.03. 0 0.03, like so. Okay. So then we just come down to our KC here. And plug in the values. We have 0 0.03 over 0 0.03. And that value is going to be squared. So our KC is basically going to be 1 over 0 0.03. I'm getting 33.33, like so. Is that what you guys got? Okay, so that's what our KC should be. In part B, any questions on this? Before I erase it. All 
All right, so our KC should be 33.33. Now they depict another scene, B and C. I'll do B and C will be done the same way. So they depict another scene here. And they say in B and C, the volume is, so I'll draw the beaker out. So that's our KC. But they say in B and C, the volume here is 0 0.5 liters. Okay. Yep. And in B, so this will be letter B. Letter B's depiction. B's question says, in scene B and C, are we at equilibrium? If we're not at equilibrium, which way will we proceed? Okay, so in B and C, in letter B, there's still three reds and three blues. Okay. The difference is now our concentration is going to be a little bit different. For D, it's going to be 0 0.03, because I have three again, each one representing 0 0.01 moles. But this time I'm going to be over a half a liter. E is going to be the same thing. 0 0.03 over um, a half. All right, so our concentrations are going to be 0 0.03 divided by a half is really multiplying it by 2, so 0 0.06 and 0 0.06 all right so now we need to set up a QC all right so it's still the same thing concentration of E over the concentration of D squared we have 0 0.06 over 0 0.06 squared so really 1 divided by 0 0.06 and I get 16.67 now so we're not at equilibrium because we do not equal KC our QC is less than our KC and if we go back to our graph well if our QC is less than our KC that means we have more reactants than we do products so we should be going this way from reactants to product now you would do the exact same thing for letter C except this time they have six blue and three red okay. Are we good on that? Okay, so letter C you got is at equilibrium. I mean, I'm looking at it, the math, it probably is. Because the blue is going to be 0 0.06. It's actually going to be higher. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we could do C while I'm at it. Let me just, uh, I'll erase this. I'll do it just so we can do the math. What's it? Six blue, three red? Like so. Okay, so this is going to change to this. This is going to change to 0 0.06, uh, 0 0.12.
four point one two. Point one two divided by point oh six divided by point oh six. Yep, I got thirty three and a third. So KC equals QC. So we are at equilibrium. Questions on this or all right, cool. Any other questions for the homework or anything? Are we okay to move on? Is the microphone sound uh, loud enough? I was adjusting. I got a new microphone to use, and I was playing around with that. All right, so we're good to go. Do you guys get the email from President Leary? Do you guys see that? Or the announcement? So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do here. So this is it for the rest of the semester. This is how we're going to roll. Okay. There's going to be no um, letter grades. You're either going to get a P, an F, and that's it. So a P is going to be anywhere from a 70 to a 100. Well, let's put it this way. He prefers that it be done this way so there's less pressure. You could choose if you really want to. <laughs> I don't care what you guys want either way. In theory, Taylor, you could if you had hundreds on everything else, that'll get you a C. Your GPA gets absolutely nothing. If you choose a P, the GPA doesn't change. It doesn't hurt your GPA. It doesn't help your GPA. Brady, what you have to make sure is if you choose a P, that it'll transfer over to Bloomsburg. Nothing happens to your GPA if you take a P. That didn't sound right. But if you get the pass grade, it doesn't hurt your GPA. It doesn't help your GPA.
That way there's less pressure. So that's number one, or number two, because number one is we're going to be on this version of teaching for the rest of the semester. So I'm going to be nice also. I know, rarity, right? Your final won't be cumulative. Everyone will have to take the final. Kelly, don't get mad at me that you could have been exempt. All right. Everyone will take the final, but it won't be cumulative. It'll just be on whatever we finish last. Yep, uh, a P is 70 plus. An F would be a 70, uh, 69 and below, which a 60 to a 69 would have been a D, but that still didn't matter for anything. Is everybody cool with if we don't have a cumulative final, we just have a regular final on what we finish up until that point? I'm just trying to think how I can make it easier. A cumulative Gen Chem 2 final that's multiple choice will be anywhere from 50 to 100 questions. Because there's no way I can get in all the material in 50 questions for a cumulative final. Kelly, what are you guys mad about? That's why I'm taking these couple seconds so that you guys can vent and Don't we all? I want to get to September. Well, just prepare just in case, Fiona. That May rolls around. We still can't go outside. I get to start a new semester, Fiona. Well, the way I look at it, we're going to have an exam on 17 and 18. Kelly, and then we were going to have another exam, but that other exam is going to be end of April. So that would technically be right around final time. Taylor, all I could say is there's no set date for us to come back yet. I don't know anything official. I saw the same letter as you ha uh, guys saw. If I'm a betting man, I don't know if anybody's going to be offering summer classes anywhere. But we'll see. Hopefully, maybe we will. Still, what, two months away? I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys, you know? So instead of having to study, you know, ten chapters for the final... And I know you could have been exempt, I get it, but is what it is, I guess, right? Exactly. You're still not taking a real final anyway. So we'll uh we'll go with that. Alright. So let's move on. Let's just uh, continue on here with equilibrium and stuff like that. So I'm going to do a sample problem 17.7. Let's say we have a reaction of the decomposition of HI gas. 
Okay? And this is going to be the new topic today. All right, so I have 2HI gas yields H2 gas plus I2 gas. And they tell me that at equilibrium, okay, at equilibrium, concentration of HI at equilibrium is 0 0.078. And they want to know what is the KC value. Okay. And this is sample problems in the slides, but I'm just going to work it out here to show you our new technique. So I want to know the KC. The first thing I should do here is write out the KC expression based on this equation. They're all gases. They're all included. So it's going to be the concentration of H2 over the concentration of I2 all over the concentration of HI squared. All right, that's what our KC is going to be. So let's plug in the values we know. I know at equilibrium HI is 0.078. I don't know what H2 is, and I don't know what I2 is. They didn't give it to me. They didn't give me H2. They didn't give me I2. All they gave me is what the concentration of HI at equilibrium is. Yet they want to know the KC value. Okay, so in order to do this, we do something known as icebox. All right, we take our reaction and we literally make boxes. And we write I, C, and E. Okay, hence icebox. I stands for initial concentration. C stands for the change in concentration. And E stands for the concentration at equilibrium. Okay, so ice. Initial change equilibrium. Initial concentration, change in concentration, equilibrium concentration. All right, so I'm going to fill in the icebox with the info they gave me. The first thing they gave me was what's the equilibrium concentration of HI? It's 0 0.078. I know it's that. So I'm going to put that there. Actually, I'm going to write it a little bit lower to use it later. Just going to make a little note of it that I know what that value is. Now, they also gave us some other information. They told us that a researcher evacuates the flask, okay, and we start with 0.2 moles of HI. I'll draw a little picture down here. 0.2, was it? Yeah. 0.2 moles of HI, and this is a 2.0 liter flask. So they say, in order to study hydrogen halide decomposition, a researcher fills an evacuated 2-liter flask with two, uh, 0.2 moles of HI gas and allows the reaction to proceed at some temperature. And the temperature they give us is 453 degrees Celsius. What they did, since this is a gas, it fills the entire container. It has a volume of 2.0. They're allowing us to calculate the initial concentration of HI. 
0 0.2 over 2 is going to be 0 0.1 molar. Are we okay with that? And again, this is right on the PowerPoints. I'm just looking at this PowerPoint right here. But showing you how to break it down. Now, they don't mention anything about H2. They don't mention anything about I2. So if they don't say H2 or I2 are in the flasks, then we don't have any initially. So our initial concentrations are 0.1 molar HI, 0 H2, 0 I2. Now we have to fill in the change. Well, what's going to happen to get to equilibrium? My reaction is going to proceed in this direction. Which means this is going to go up and this is going to go down. Now we don't know how much it's going to go up. We don't know how much it's going to go down. So we use the variable X. This is going to go up by some value x. This is going to go up by some value x. And hi is going to go down by, and the coefficients matter, a value of 2x. To find my equilibrium concentrations, I just do the math. And I know you don't think of variables as actual numbers, but the variables are actual numbers. Zero plus x, x. Zero plus x, x. Zero point one minus two x. These are my actual concentrations. Well, I can't plug x and x in here. That doesn't make any sense. I have to be able to solve for x somehow. And that's where this comes into play. They told me that at equilibrium, my concentration is 0 0.078 for hi. I figured out using my ice table that the concentration at equilibrium as an algebraic equation is 0.1 minus 2x. Well, these two are equal to one another. They're the same thing. So I can set 0 0.1 minus 2x equal to 0 0.078 and solve for x. If I do the math, x equals 0 0.011. Which means the concentration of H2 is 0 0.011. The concentration at equilibrium of I2 is 0 0.011. I can now plug them in over here. And solve for my KC value. And by doing so, I find that Kc is equal to 
zero point zero two zero. Okay. Questions on this? Yes, for change, yes. Um, well, if I'm the side that's going up, it's always plus. If I'm the, the side that, whatever, which way the reaction is going, I'm always minus. The variable, since I don't know what it is, is x. And then the coefficient is what goes in front. So there's no coefficient, so it's 1x, 1x and 2x. So if this was say a 3, it would be plus 3x here. So it's important that your equations balance. Yeah, it's, well it's really 1x which is x. Because you have to go back to like the kinetics part where two of these have to break down to give me one of these and one of these. Anybody else? Well, it's positive because it's a concentration, but if you do the math here, you're going to take 0 0.078 minus 0 0.1 and then divide it by negative 2. So you're going to have negative divided by a negative. So that's why it's a positive. If I do the algebra here, I'm going to subtract 0 0.1 from each side. And then I'm going to divide by negative 2x. This should be a negative number over here. Yep, it's a negative because it's 0.1 minus 2x. Yep. Anything else? So first thing to do is read the problem. Are they giving you information at equilibrium? Do they want you to find stuff? Which, uh, Victoria, which one, which way is the reaction going is how you tell which one's negative and which one's positive. So in the beginning of the problem, and if you look on the slides on 17.7 or in your book, 
They tell you you start with this and they don't mention any of this. So these must be zeros and that must be the information that we calculated. Well, to get to equilibrium, if I have none of this and all of this, I must be going this way. Which means that this concentration has to increase from zero and this concentration has to decrease from 0.1. So the signs are all about which way is the reaction going. Anything else? All right, so let's look at another example problem. This time we'll go through the slides. Don't get icebox happy. And what I mean is you don't always need an icebox. If they're giving you all the stuff at equilibrium, the whole idea of icebox is to find concentrations at equilibrium. If they're giving you the equilibrium values, then you don't need to do icebox. And sample problem 17.8, is an example where we don't need icebox. So don't get icebox happy and think I've got to do icebox every single time. So it says, in a study concerning the conversion of methane to other fuels, a chemical engineer mixes gaseous CH4, which is methane, and water in a 0.32 liter flask at 1200 Kelvin. Now, they're giving me equilibrium values. They're telling me at equilibrium the uh, flask contains 0.26 moles of CO, 0.091 moles of H2, and 0.041 moles of CH4. And they want to know what is the H2O concentration at equilibrium. And then they give you the KC. Well, they give me the KC, they give me three of the equilibrium concentrations, and they just want to know the fourth. I don't need icebox. They didn't give me any initial, therefore I don't need to do a change. They did all the work and gave me all the equilibrium values. The two things you have to take away here, okay, on this, besides the fact that they gave you equilibrium values, is number one, they gave you a volume. Since I'm gases, I fill the entire container, gas, 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 gas. I fill the entire container, which means that each one of my gases is 0.32 liters. So first thing, write a KC expression. Okay, that's going to be my first thing is to write the KC expression. At least I would do that. And there it is right here. Concentration of product raised to their coefficient, the other product raised to their coefficient, product to coefficient, product to coefficient. My second step would be to find the concentrations of each one of my substances that they gave me. 
Well, they told me methane is 0 0.041, and I'm in a 0 0.32 liter flask. So find the concentration, moles per liter. Do it again for CO. And do it again for H2. Now I'm going to escape here because... So we can see it. Okay. So I found all my concentrations. So plug them in. So I would essentially plug this in here. Point two eight over here. Point eight one in for CO. Point one three in for CH four. I also know the KC value. My KC value they gave me up here is 0.26. I'll plug it in here. QC, KC, you know, roughly the same thing. Now what they did is they rewrote the equation out. And they said H2O would come over here and my QC would go down there doing the algebra to solve for H2O. So I'm left with 0.81 for CO, the 0.28 cubed for H2, the 0.13 for the CH4, and the 0.26 is my KC value to solve for H2O. And therefore my concentration comes out to be 0.53 molar for H2O. So I like how your book does this question after it shows icebox. Because it shows you don't get icebox happy if they already gave you everything at equilibrium. All right, questions about this sample problem. So read the question. Are they giving you initial? If they're probably giving you and you see initial concentrations, you're probably going to need icebox. If they're giving you all equilibrium concentration and KC values, you don't need icebox. Are we good? Move on. Questions on that one? And let's look at another one. Okay. They give me this equation. CO gas plus H2O gas 
is at equilibrium with CO2 gas plus H2O gas. Or H2 gas, this should be, sorry. H2 gas. Okay. And they give me the following information. They tell me I start with 0 0.250 moles of CO and 0 0.250 moles of H2O and we're in a 125 mil flask. They also tell me that the Kc for this reaction is equal to 1.56. And they want to know what are my equilibrium concentrations for everything. It says what is the equilibrium, this is sample problem 17.9, what is the equilibrium concentrations or equilibrium uh, mixture concentrations. Okay, so the first thing, all right, they gave me initials. They want to know equilibrium. So I know right away that I need ice box. I need an ice box. I, C, and E. The mistake people make right away is They'll put the moles in here. Remember, it stands for concentration. So my first step, all right, for me always, is to write my Kc expression. So my Kc is going to be the concentration of CO2 times the concentration of H2, concentration of CO, concentration of H2O. Okay, at equilibrium. My second thing is I want to calculate the initial concentrations I'm starting with. They told me all I have in my container is CO and H2O to start. I have to figure out those values. Two and two. All right. So these are my initial concentrations. They don't mention anything about this or this. So they must be zero. All right. What are my changes going to be? What's CO's change going to be? What am I going to fill that block in with? Negative x, exactly. It's going to go down by some value x. And it's negative x and just x because the coefficient is 1. How about here? How about H2O? What's H2O going to go down by? Negative x also, right? And these are going to go up by x and up by x.
So at equilibrium, I'm going to be 2 minus x, 2 minus x, 0, and 0. Now those are my equilibrium concentrations. Oh, sorry, x and x, not 0 and 0, my bad. 0 plus x, 0 plus x, which would be x. x and x, my fault. Correct x. All right. So let's write our KC expression out using these new concentrations. CO2 is x, H2 is x. CO is 2 minus x. And 2 minus x. Okay, well, they gave us what the KC value is, 1.56. X times X is X squared. 2 minus X times 2 minus X is 2 minus X squared. And now I got to solve for X. Okay. How I'm going to solve for x? Well, I'm going to take the square root of this side, and since this is a perfect square over here, I'm going to take the square root of that side. Now, I'm going to multiply each side by 2 minus x. I'm going to end up with 2.5 minus 1.25x equals x. 2.5 equals 2.25x. Therefore, x equals... x equals 1.11. Now, I didn't answer the question yet. The question said, what is my equilibrium concentration? So, for CO2 and H2, since they equal x, the answer is 1.11 and 1.11. For CO and H2O, it's going to be 0.89 and 0 0.89, those are my answers. I plug this back in here. I'm ignoring it. I'll pretend you didn't uh, type it. Well, once I solve for x, I got to plug it in here to find the new concentration. So the concentration of CO at equilibrium is 2 minus x. So 2 minus what I solve for x 
is the point eight nine. Other questions? I want to do two more examples with you and then I'll assign homework and we'll be done and you'll have a great weekend. All right. Let's say we had a similar a similar problem. Okay. Say we have A and A breaks down to B and C. Okay? Let's say the initial concentration of A is one molar. Okay, and let's say the KC value for this is 3.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. I don't know, I'm making stuff up. Okay, and I want to know what my equilibrium concentrations are. I want to know what's the concentration of A at equilibrium, what's the concentration of B at equilibrium, and what's the concentration of C at equilibrium. That's terrible. All right, so we set up our KC. Our KC is going to be concentration of B times the concentration of C all over the concentration of A. They gave us an initial. So I must have to do icebox here since they didn't mention anything about equilibrium. So we're going to do icebox. All right. A is 1 to start. They don't mention anything about B, so it's 0. They don't mention anything about C, it's 0. I know I must be proceeding this way. All right, I must be going this way. Negative X, positive X, positive X. 1 minus x, x, and x, just like we've been doing. All right, so now I plug into my KC what I know. I know my KC is 3.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. I know my concentration of B is x. I know my concentration of C is x. And I know that A is 1 minus X.
So I'm left with 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth equals x squared over 1 minus x. Now the last problem we did was a perfect square. This was squared, this was squared, we took the square root of each side. This isn't a perfect square. So I need to distribute and all of that fun stuff, so I get 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth minus 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth x equals x squared. If I combined everything to one side, I'm ended up with x squared plus 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth x minus 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth and that equals zero. So I'm left with this equation, x squared plus an x minus a value. How do we solve this? How would we solve a problem like this? I've got an x squared, I've got an x value, and I've got just a numeric, yeah, Taylor. We would have to use the quadratic equation or plug it into your calculator. Yeah, the quadratic. But here's the deal. Chemists don't want to use the quadratic formula. unless we absolutely have to. So there's a rule called the 5% check, and here's how it works. And you can work out the quadratic after we work this out, if it works out. Again, I made up the numbers. So we get to this point, and our only choice is to use the quadratic. What chemists will do, and the problem will read something like, even at high temperatures, the formation of B and C is not favored. Or it'll say B and C is not favored or something like that. Okay? What that means is most likely my reaction doesn't proceed to give me much product. So in the 5% check rule, what we do is we get rid of this X and pretend like the change is negligible. Okay. Well, that makes this 100 times easier. If I get rid of that x value, then I have a perfect square on each side. And I just have to take the square root of 3.0 times 10 to the minus fifth. Let's see what that is. 3 exponent negative 5. And then take the square root. 0 0.005. 0 0.005. So I get x equals, we'll do it this way, 0 0.005. Okay. Now, the 5% check is this. You take your change. Okay, so you take the change, you divide it by the initial. If it's less than 5%, if this answer, okay, is less than 5%, then it's okay to make this assumption. If it's greater than 5%, you have to use the quadratic. Now, I know of a professor who uh, taught a, a, a chemistry class different than mine, um, who made them use the quadratic over and over and over. And I said, what about the 5% check? And 
they never heard of it because it's relatively, you know, not, it's only in Gen Chem. And they said, well, the quadratic's more exact. Well, if you do the quadratic for this problem and you solve it for X, you're going to get roughly that amount. Because if we do the 5% check, the change is 0 0.005. The initial concentration is 1. If I multiply that by 100, I've got 0.5%, which is less than 5%. So making this assumption is okay. Well, that's why we do the 5% check, and that's why you can look up the quadratic. All right, questions on this or the 5% check. So what you do is if you have an X in the denominator, it's not a perfect square, cross that X out, solve for X normally then. It becomes a lot easier. Then take that answer, put it over your initial concentration, and if it's less than 5%, you're good to go. What we're going to do book-wise, Kelly, usually you don't need the quadratic. In real life, if you're doing research, sometimes you have to use the quadratic because the change isn't le or is greater than four, uh, 5%. All right, one more I want to look at really quick, guys, and that'll be it. Let's say we had a, a problem. I'm going to make up a generic again and say we had something like A gas plus B gas is at equilibrium with C gas. Okay, and let's say they told us initially, all right, A is 1, B is 1, and C is 2. Okay, and they tell us that our KC value is I don't know 3.8 and they want us to solve a problem they want us to find you know my concentrations at equilibrium so we know we have initial concentrations and we know we have a KC value so we write out our KC expression and we say, okay, KC is going to be concentration of C over the concentration of A times the concentration of B, like so. We set up our icebox because we know we have initial. They want to know what the equilibrium concentrations are. So we set up our icebox. The difference in this problem is the following. One, one, and two. Every problem we looked at up until this point, my products were zero. So I knew we had to be moving this way. So I knew that this had to be a minus, this had to be a minus, and this was a plus. The problem is, on this problem, 
we start it with a flask or a beaker or whatever that had both the reactants and the products in it. So I don't know which direction. I can't assume it's going left to right this time. Because these aren't zero. So it doesn't mean I'm proceeding this way. So what I have to do is find my QC before I can even do my ice box. 2 over 1 times 1. So my QC is 2. My QC is less than my KC. And since my, my QC is less than my KC, I must be proceeding this way. So if I'm given initial concentrations of reactants and products, I have to be given a KC to do this. But if I'm given those, then what I have to do is find my QC so that I can put the proper, in our case here, it is still minus X, minus X, and minus and plus X over or here. However, if this number was, let's say, 4, then I'd be proceeding this way. So let's imagine, let's say I made this number up and we made this 4 now. If this was 4, my QC would be 4. My QC would be greater than my KC. And therefore, in that reaction, we'd be going this way. And this would be the minus. And this would be the plus, And this would be the plus. So if you're given a set of concentrations, but they give it to you for both the reactants and the products, then before you even fill in icebox, you have to do this comparison to see which direction the reaction's moving. And that's just like the homework problem we started the day with, 17.35, uh, letter B. Now, a problem on the slides that's worked out that does this is this problem right here, sample problem 17.11. And that's a problem you should try for homework. Okay, they give you initial concentrations of everything. All right. Questions. In addition to that problem, uh, whenever I finish chapter 18, in addition to sample problem 17.11, And just so you know, on the slides, uh, all this icebox stuff is in one slide, a nice summary. And we'll start Chapter 18 on Thursday. I'm going to finish 17 um, on Tuesday. I'm working on them, Fiona. I'm working on them. I'm about halfway through. So 
So I'll have them done probably over the weekend. I'm going to stop the video there. I'll keep the stream going.